uh, six digit, there's six with two X's, uh, um, one fourth of MBK, my brother's keeper. Bring it back, DJ. Bring it back, DJ. Most of my friends are junkies, sniffers and flunkies in a city that's always trying to fuck me that's holy Toledo. Remember the class where I taught y'all how to make it rain? That's what I'm gonna be doing every single night. Dollar, dollar, bill, y'all. Yeah. Six digit, boy. That's a damn high price. Ah. I'm like Christ, I've been alive twice. Bro. Uh, I've been rapping since the seventh grade. I don't want to date myself and tell you how old I am, but that was 1997, eight-ish. And I've been putting out tapes and everything since that long. Did a whole lot of shit. Been all over the country. Um, you could hear me on Impact Wrestling every week. Uh, um, yeah, that's about it. That's a that's a list of my accomplishments. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what, did you get into wrestling, or is it just a, you you a fan, and then that's why you? Well, I've been a I've been a fan of wrestling my whole life. Never did I think the two things would mix. You know what I mean? Like I said, I've been doing hip hop for since I was in the seventh grade, and uh, I I've always loved wrestling. And the, the opportunity presented itself because Trey Miguel wrestles for Impact Wrestling, and uh, he has, he was a fan of my music. He's from Toledo, Ohio, originally. You know what I mean? So he was a fan of my music for years and just just fucked with me. So when he got that platform and was in there, he was like, man, I'm going to reach out and see if Six Digit will do a song for me to come to the ring to. So I did that. And I mean, that's my most top stream song. And like people be re-uploading it to YouTube and shit because it opened up. What I'm trying to say is it opened up a whole nother lane for me. I didn't realize there were so many, uh, you know, hip hop fans that were huge wrestling marks. And it says it just crossed over way better than I ever thought it would. And now I've done I've done entrance themes for Randy West and you know I, uh, the Rascals on Impact just reached out for me to do a theme song for them so I potentially have another song on TV soon and it's just like it just opened the floodgates so now I, I found out wrestling fucks with me just as much as I fuck with wrestling which is awesome because now I get to be a fan and I get in free to events and shit get to watch wrestling too. <laughs> uh, yeah, I feel that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. A door opening is a door opening, you know right? What I'm you gotta take and you never off. know where it's gonna be at, neither. You know what I mean? Like you know, I was, like I said, I, I was just a fan. Never in a million years did I think, oh shit, I'm gonna get to be part of the show. <laughs> you know? Yeah. yeah like, um, so we coined some called the golden time of rap in Toledo. Mm -hmm. Like, do you believe in that? Like, uh, like. If it was, what would be your golden time of rap in Toledo? I'd say probably at the at the height of live performance, you know what I mean? When it was like, um, man, I'm trying to think who we had out here at the time. I mean, Hell's Kitchen was the big one for me because I'm from the east side and they were, you know, filling venues, you know. So like late 90s probably and we had Rock Click and... Uh, I don't know, I, but again, that might just be nostalgia, because that's when I was the age that these guys were like gods to me, you know what I mean? And like Magic Wand and shit, like it was just like, wow, once I seen there was people like, oh, these dudes are from where I'm from, and they do this? <laughs> you know what I mean? That was like, that was what was like really cool to me, and I was like, damn, okay, there, maybe I, I don't just have to watch people on TV, I can probably do this too. Okay. Yeah. You know, it is no coincidence that you are now rocking with the garage. I told them put me in rotation. I'm trying to take it there. I've been hearing all these stories about a garage in the chair. I told them put me in rotation. Because of, uh, you, you just brought up something like Hell's Kitchen. Yeah. Um, like, when when I was doing music, all I didn't know too much about the East Side. Yeah. You know, and I knew y'all. Mm -hmm. um, you as a individual and <clears throat> Hell's Kitchen. Yeah. You know, um, it wasn't too, but I wasn't from the east side. The east side is a, 
a whole a city of his own. <laughs> it is, know? man. Everybody says that. I don't know how to take that, but yeah, I, it, <laughs> I, I'll, I'll agree. Yeah. All right, so with that being said, um, give me your east side uh, top five. Mm, my east side top five. Hell's Kitchen, off rip, you know what I mean? Because that's like... They, they definitely inspired me to do this shit in the first place because, like I said, it was like, oh, these dudes, not, they weren't just from Toledo. They was from my neighborhood. You know what I mean? Like, I right, walked down the street, and I did. I walked down the street and tried to give these dudes my demo and shit, you know, and that's kind of how I broke in. So Hell's Kitchen's always going to be my number one, like, local shit. Um, East Side, there's, uh, there's too many to name. I mean, Bollock. I always fuck with Bollock because me and him, we started rapping together when we was little kids, like before it was like got real, you know what I mean? We was just like pretending to rap and shit. He was one of the first people that I did this with. And um, of course, MBK, a -Loss, you know, a -Loss is my brother. That's like my number one, you know, that's my homie for life. And um, what is that, three I named? I need two more. Uh... I'm trying to. I'm trying to say. I'm trying not to throw no shade on nobody neither. You know, they're gonna be like, you didn't mention me. Um, <laughs> but I mean, it's yeah. You're, top you're right. You're right. And that's what you know. The first things that come to mind. And it's no offense to nobody if it doesn't. I might have just. It might have just slipped my mind or whatever. You know what I mean? So it's yeah. it's not like that. Um, because I'm really I'm just trying to list people that I that I listen to. You know what I mean? Stuff that's yeah. in my playlist, and I and it kind of ends there. And that's not fair. I shouldn't say that. OIC, you know, I fuck with OIC, but they're new school. They just they're just new. But um, yeah, like that's it for my playlist. Like East Side people, you know what I mean? And uh, if I if I forgot you, no shade. <laughs> <laughs> oh. What's your Mount Rushmore to be? That's probably a little bit easier because that opens the spectrum a little bit. So I, the ones I'll say off rip is Hell's Kitchen, uh, Magic Wand. Uh, I put Sakosa up there. Um, how many people are on Mount Rushmore? Four. I don't know my presidents Four. like that. I need one more person. Yeah, one more person. <laughs> Uh, hmm. Hmm. I mean, I, I'd have to put Life up there. I mean, I guess I wouldn't put him hip-hop, but, I mean, that's the same shit. If you yeah, listen to hip-hop, you listen to Life, <laughs> you know, yeah. so, yeah. yeah. i put okay. Life up there. And, and J. Rush, too, you know what I mean? So, let's put, we'll, oh, we'll, we'll put one more person up there. We put, <laughs> it's my Mount Rushmore, man. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, people, uh, see, you know I asked the question because mm -hmm. soon as you ask the question, you think of your friends and how you don't want to not put them on. Uh, yeah, and that's true, you know what I mean? You want to include people and you also, it's not for me, it's not so much that I don't want to not include them. I don't want to exclude people and make them feel some type of way, you know what I mean? Because I really, I truly fuck with everybody and I, and I love yeah. Toledo. I love them. I love that there is such a, a music scene in Toledo and there always has been and that you might... You might not think that because you might hurt otherwise people would love to say i'm a hater and this and that shit but like i was telling you earlier off the air you know what i mean like i'm just forgetful so people be thinking i'd be like not doing something for them and it's well, you just gotta remind me like a motherfucker you know what i mean you know you had to tell me this morning that i had this goddamn interview you know what i mean like it just i don't be i don't be trying to shit on people or duck people i fuck with everybody in toledo man i love that we have such a scene here and it's that has thrived for so long and continues to it's when i've seen it so evolve into so many different things since 1997 you know what i'm saying okay. that like i i, I love i love it i appreciate every fucking moment of it so you you honest no not not that's not the way to ask the question <laughs> wait uh, so i do want to ask you how do you feel about the uh, toledo music scene like Do you, you be doing shows now? Uh, not not quite as often as I used to, cause I just like I said I've been doing it here so long that I, and I think a lot of artists do this and it's a downfall. They get booked every fucking weekend in the same city. You know what I mean? Like you can't even your your even your biggest fans, they ain't gonna come see you every fucking weekend, and you're just gonna burn out. You know what I mean? You're gonna burn yourself out and you're gonna burn out the. Uh, the quality and the uh you know the specialness of what you do people are gonna be like oh 
I'll go, I'll go next week. You know what I mean? Oh, I'm not going to go this one. I'll go check them out next month. You know what I mean? So now I play a lot less, and the crowds get a lot bigger because I'm not playing every fucking weekend, you know? I'm six digit, and you're watching HD The Garage. The, uh, the friend question. That's what I hope. Look, I was hoping you was going to come back to that. Go ahead. What's the question? Why don't you hear local music on local radio stations? Okay. And you know, with that being said, that with Frank interview, he said he can count the number of local artists that have been on rotation on the juice on one hand. Okay. And I'm, I, um, I, uh, because this is the second time you asked me that question. Yeah. And I, I, answered the, I answered it the politically correct way the first time. And I'm going to answer it similar this, this time. When it comes to, I mean, anybody, Frank or anybody who says they can count the people that the Jews play in regular rotation, the local people that Jews play in regular rotation on one hand, can go to hell. Um, and I, with all due respect, with all due respect to people who feel that way, I give a hearty, and I hope my bishop ain't listening. I, no, I'm not even gonna say it. No, fuck you. Anyways, I mean, it's, it's good to travel. I think everybody should get out of town and go you know, and that, and you shouldn't care what kind of crowd is there. I'll go fucking play in some other city, and if there's five people there, fuck it, there's five people that wasn't hip to me before, yeah. you know. But but in the, in your own city, you shouldn't play so so much. And I I say that to every fucking rapper out there to stop playing so much. It's it's crazy. We do it backwards, like mm -hmm. the uh, new artists uh, here. We do almost do a. Uh, Vegas residency. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a, actually a very good comparison because that, yeah. that's how it feels, you know what I'm saying? And a lot of people will do it even at the same club. You know what I mean? It'd be yeah. like two days in a row and shit at the same club. Like, who's going to that? I'm, I'm not. And I love rap. And I'm not going to go to that. <laughs> well, that, that leads us into the next question. Like, um, what you think the disconnect in Toledo between artists and fans? Uh... Man, that's a good one. It's hard to say. Uh, I've, I've tried to foc take my focus off of Toledo so much recently and just focus on other things because what I've noticed the most, and I, I don't know if this answers your question or not, but what I've noticed the most is that um, you get the least love in your own city. <laughs> you know what I mean? And like, it, like wh when I go out of town, like, okay, for example, uh, MBK, we were on tour with the Insane Clown Posse, and we were in uh, Clearwater, Florida, I believe, and our, we had our, uh, a MBK tour van or whatever, we pull around to the alley, and there's like four or five kids come running out of line, and you know, they got their face painted like Juggalo and shit, and they're like, is that them? And I'm like, who do, who do they think we are? And it says MBK on the side of our van, they run up, and they're like knocking on the windows and shit, and I'm like, like we're the fucking Beatles or something as we fall in, you know what I mean? I'm like, wow, you know what I mean? And then the, and then ICP's performing and we're in the back of the club. There's a line out the door for people to get our autograph on some posters and shit. And I'm like, man, what a you know what a cool moment. And then we came back to town, okay? That was like the last thing on a tour. And then we came back to Toledo, and, and we booked a, a a coming home party. You know, we're home from tour. Come party with us. We did it for free at a fucking strip club for free. Wow. You know how many fucking people showed up? Five. Wow. A couple of my homies. Hey, welcome home. You know what I mean? Which was cool. We can hang out. You know, good to see my homies. But we, how do we come off a tour playing sold out fucking arenas and you know what I mean? And come home and we get we're getting love people chasing our goddamn van in Florida. But we come home and people are like, oh, pfft, I used to live next door to him. Fucking you know what I mean? And I think that's what it is. If people are just for one, there's too used to you. You know what I mean? And where you live. Yeah. And for two, they just um, I don't want to say people are haters, but don't nobody want to see you do better than them, you know what I mean? And if you come from where they come from, they're like, oh, well, fuck him. Fuck him. I went, I went to that school, too. Fuck him. <laughs> it's not just me, because I know that I've got friends, you know, like, for example, Ray Yon from Jackass. He's a, he comes to here, and I, I took him up to Tony Paco's, and he's signing hot dog buns, and people are giving him free weed at the dispensary and shit. And he's, he's fucking loving it, you know what I mean? And then he goes back home, and no one gives a flying fuck. He's got to pay the bill everywhere he goes, because that's where he lives, and they're just used to him, you know? Yeah. It's not special to him. I think that's for everybody, though. I think that goes for everybody in entertainment. You're never you're never going to be a hometown hero, and that sucks, because that's what we dream of but, as artists, you know? If you think about it, Slim Thug, Houston. 
Yeah. Like Houston show all the um, homegrown artists love. Yeah, you're right. And then, like, so I think it got so bad here, people don't like the term local artist. Yeah. Like you say, what is you if you're not a local artist? No yeah. matter what, you a local artist. Well, see, what I like to tell people, like when that when that term comes up, I just like to say that I'm local in the sense that I'm from here. You know what I mean? But I'm not I'm not local in the sense that that's not my mind state. You know what I mean? I'm not well, I'm not stuck here because I've been, and I don't think anybody should be. You're not stuck here just because you're a local artist. Doesn't mean you have to stay local to here. You, you need to branch out. It. You know? <laughs> you just proved it to my. What I just said, uh -huh. yeah, like you, you yourself, you, you know, had to explain why what you think of local, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's a, it's a Toledo mindset. Yeah. No, it, yeah, it just by saying local, it it demeanor what you doing. Yeah. To people. Yeah, it sounds like a negative. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like you little. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> And, that, and that's why I don't like the term, because that's how it makes me feel, too, you know what I mean? I feel like if, like, people negate what I do, like, oh, he's just a local artist. I'm like, what the fuck is local about what I do? I've been all over the nation. I've done toured with fucking Trey the Truth, and you know what I mean? Like, I, I do this shit. How much more do I have to do this shit before you fucking believe that I do this shit? <laughs> you know? It gets, it gets aggravating, man. It gets super aggravating, but especially doing as long as I have, I'm like, what the fuck, man? Like, at what point do I become, what, at one point do I go from local to national? And who decides that? You know what I mean? Well, because I, if I you ask... I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. I think you decide. Yeah. You know, what you were saying, you said... Well, like, had, because, it, like, the industry, they already decided we was national, you know what I mean? When we when we signed and, and we went out on tour and whatever, then that's that's national artists. Yeah. But then back home, people are like, oh, you're just a local artist, you're just a local artist. I'm like... What do you mean just a local artist? Yes, I'm local. I'm always going to be local because I'm local to here. This is where I fucking live. This is where I, always, this is always yeah, where I want to live. That's, you know what I mean? The, that's the only point I'm getting at. You local because you yeah. were born and you live here. Right. I'm always going to be local to here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. I just think the term that got misunderstood, like people thinking as you, you a local artist and he a national artist. Yes. It's a, yeah. It's the, the, the definition has been changed, you know? That's yeah. just... And ain't nothing we can do about that. It's just gonna always come with that stigma now, which sucks, you know. But yeah, I'm always gonna be a local artist. I'll always be local to Toledo, even if I'm, you know, fucking international. I'm still be local. <laughs> yeah. And well, the internet makes you uh, international now. Yeah. You know, and the internet actually took everything right. out of what we doing. Yeah. You know, like I seen the clip that um, on your page about what Snoop was saying that Bro. he got a billion streams and it's not worth four hundred fifty thousand. What's well, what's crazy? I just posted before I seen him post that. Wait, he said forty five thousand. Yeah, forty five thousand he got for a billion streams. And I was just, I was just complaining. I'd made a post like a week before I seen that clip of him. I made a post and was complaining because I'm looking at my Spotify numbers and I'm like, hold on. So I had this, I have this song on Impact Wrestling. It's got all these fucking plays. I got, uh, what is it? A hundred thousand. I got a hundred thousand plays on one song. Okay. This year. So I'm like, okay, that's got to equal some kind of money, right? Yeah. $100. And that's before I split with my producer. So my producer gets 25% of that. So I get $75. For a hundred thousand streams. Now, tell me if the radio plays your song a hundred thousand times, you're gonna get a lot more. You know, not a lot more, but you're gonna get more than a hundred bucks. Yeah. That's it's robbery. That's insane to me that Spotify and not just Spotify. I hate to crucify them like they're the only ones doing this. It's all the streaming, streaming services. It's yeah, all the streaming services. We just went through it with all the actors. Now, the people streaming. say Spotify because Spotify is the only ones that were dumb enough to give us the numbers on fucking plain view like that so that even the stupidest person can look at it and go, what? <laughs> you know what I mean? How, how do I get a billion plays but I only get $45,000? Well, that's transparency. I think that will make it more... That you would go over there and mess yeah, with Yeah, to be fair, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, so like, you know, so Spot at least Spotify's robbing us right to our fucking faces. <laughs> <laughs> at least they use the grease. <laughs> right. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's crazy, man. That it is. is crazy. I can't. I can't believe that that's what it's come to. You know what I mean? And that's that's another thing that keeps people. It keeps artists feeling local in their mind. You know what I mean? That's why. 
that's why I feel like I, I got a hundred thousand plays, but I feel like I'm in the same boat as a guy that's got three hundred and forty-two plays. You know what I mean? We're in the yeah. same boat. It's not like I, it's not. I feel like we are. We're in the same boat. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's not that's not fair because I've I've put in more time, more money. I worked harder than the guy that's got three hundred plays, but I get the same cut. <laughs> you know what I mean? And maybe well, should I stop trying? <laughs> Never that, but you know what I mean. It's just like. These are just the things I think about daily. Like, damn, man, where where does the money come into all this? You know what I mean? I've been doing this for years, and I'm like, fuck, man. I do it at professional level, so where's the money part? <laughs> Y'all well, hiding well, some see, money back there? <laughs> I think, um, well, have you ever thought about this? Do you, do you feel like you bitter? So? Uh, at certain aspects, yeah. And what, what I think mean? anybody my age or that's been doing it as long as I have and just faced so many let downs, you know what I mean? It'll leave you bitter. I try not to be. I try to always be positive, but it's tough. <laughs> yeah, because I, I have to do something mm. where I go through your Facebook messages. Yeah. And then, so, you one by one putting them up, you don't <laughs> see it, but when you look at them as a whole, yeah, it start looking different. Yeah. You know, so I kind of get the mindset of a person with a... Uh, the information they give. Yeah. You know? uh, yeah. But this unsolicited, so, you know, it, it really shows you. Okay. Yeah. You know? um, yeah. Let's talk about a little bit about um, you, your text, about putting money, dropping an album, uh -huh. and um, you've been wasting money for years, and Oh yeah. Yeah, like speak on that. What what, what did the uh, text actually say? I had it in, in the phone, but I can't. Uh, the phone. I'm trying to think how it did word it. Basically, I was. Uh, I don't know. I can pull it up and tell you. I don't post that much. It'll be right on there. It was just the other day, right? I'm right. I remember I posted something like that. Give me one second. All right, I said. You know, I just seen the fuck streams post with. <laughs> and I, I'll tell you this too. I'm, I'm guilty of this. I be posting too much shit on. Uh, I'm like some I'm somebody that because I the thing is I, I don't have a lot of people in my life I got my girl I can talk to and that's it you know what I mean I don't have like family that I reach out to or nothing like that so it's like I'm, I'm just like I'm a guy that's in my head a lot you know what you, I mean you think you emotional post yeah yeah so when you I do I try to be better about it now when I when I used to drink I was a lot worse you know what I mean yeah. I'm, a, I'm an emotional person yeah. I don't drink anymore I ain't drank for three years so you won't see me emotional out in public ever again <laughs> Imagine uh, what they call it. Uh, they used to call it drunk texting. So uh, yeah. now you can text to Facebook and everybody can see it. Yeah, that you ain't got to text. You can go live with your drunk ass and like, yes, it's, it's bad. It's, it, the, the technology's bad, man. All right. All right, I said, what I said was my next project is 23 songs and it's complete and going to production now. Physical copies will be free and I will be distributing them all over the country. I've been losing money for 20 years. Let's make it worth it this time. And why I said that was because I put out, I don't even know how many albums now. Like I said, I've been doing this since 97. Wait, let me ask you. So mm -hmm. all them, the pictures of different covers, was them singles or albums? Albums. God damn. Yeah. Yeah, you got a lot of albums. Yeah. Yeah, all albums and all and I, all physical. You know what I mean? These are I take my money that you know from the time I was a kid working at Subway up until now. You know what I'm saying? I would take any fucking dollar that I had and invest it into hip hop. So I always had you know thousand physical CDs to sell through the city or whatever. That's just how I always did shit and before there was ever a label or any help or anything. You know what I mean? And there and for the record there isn't any more. You know, there was for a moment in time, but now now I do it all yeah. Now it's all DIY again. I do I do it all myself. It all comes out of my pocket. So, so what you was kinda explaining that uh, mm -hmm. when you said that or post that post. Yeah. Well the post was uh what I what I plan on doing is because I've just been losing money for years. Or just press these up. 
and and uh, they sell little by little. Money is money's residual from hip hop. You know what I mean? You sell one thing here, one thing there. It's not like you people think, oh, you're gonna invest this much money and you're gonna get this much back. That's not how it works. You can invest this money in little by little. You get a little bit back and you spend it before it. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? But the my idea now is to just I'm gonna press up however many you know what I mean, fifty thousand, a hundred thousand CDs, and I'm gonna go state to state by myself. And just go into record stores, talk to people, go, you know, clothing stores, anywhere where I'm going to meet people that love hip hop. And I'm going to talk to people and I'm going to hand them my CD and just give it to them for free. And it's not going to be a little rinky dink, you know, thin case bullshit. It's going to be a case and sealed and shit. It's going to look like a fucking $20 CD. And I'm going to give it to everybody for free. And the reason I know that's going to work is because I took 500 CDs back in 2011 it was the same way they were all sealed you know factory sealed good to go i took 500 of them out to the gathering of the juggalos and i passed them out for free i just gave 500 cds out to everybody there that was in 2011 i go to the gathering of the juggalos now and there's still people that remember who i was and they're excited to see me and they want to buy my new shit when they see me out there so i know if it worked on that small little scale at one place if i go to every state and do that at least 50 people are going to remember me and that's, you know it's got to equal something and I, like I said, I've been, I've been, I've been doing this and losing money for so long. Anyways, I might as well lose it for a reason this time. You know what I mean? If I'm gonna Wait, lose money. So what? What is work? What is work? What do the meaning of work mean? You said it's gonna work this time. Uh, reach, reach ears. To me, to me, like, sure, money would be great, but that's not like the big. Uh, that's not the end game in all this shit that I've been doing all these years. And that's not the end game for me. The end game for me is that I just reach ears. I just want a lot of people to connect to my music. I want, you know what I mean? I want people to be like, yo, that's my favorite artist. Or I, I love that CD. Or I'll, I'll never stop listening to that song. You know what I mean? Just the way, the way music makes me feel. You know, the songs that I love, I want my songs. And I think they have. You know what I mean? I, I know they have. But they're to people here locally or people that have been able to be exposed to my music or whatever. But I haven't reached as many ears as I should. And I don't I don't want to die before that happens. You know what I mean? I want to I want to be somebody that did everything I could to reach as many ears as I can before it's all over with. Do you, do you think that is like every rapper's or every artist's fear? Fear that they won't reach the ears of everyone? Well, M Magic said something to me that uh, stood out. He said, when they stop loving you, it'll kill you too. Yeah. And I, li I like that quote because I feel that 100%. It's, uh, that, that's definitely my biggest fear. My biggest fear, I mean, I think everyone's biggest fear is dying. Nobody wants to die, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But my biggest fear is I die and my music doesn't live on. You know what I mean? I just want, I want, I want to know that when I'm gone from this earth, that my music will still be here and it'll still reach people. Yeah. What 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 do you think was the a pivotal point in your career that you made a decision that changed the outlook of what what you're doing now? Like that put you here instead of put you there. Uh, my own ego was probably a big part of it. You know what I mean? Um, drugs, drugs and alcohol. I think that's probably the, that's probably the biggest stunt for a lot of people in Toledo, and not just in Toledo and and, and everywhere. You know what I mean? Because I've seen a lot of talent. We see it at we see it at the biggest levels. Talented artists that lose their life because they want to party and shit. You know what I mean? And I wasted a lot of time doing that. And if I could re if I could rewind and undo anything. I'd have never partied on tour. You know what I mean? I would have just been about business 100% of the time. But you can't, I can't, you know, I'm not going to live with regret or be like, oh, it didn't work because of this and that. I'm just going to try again. You know what I mean? And that's what I'm in the process of doing now. Like I said, I'm started all over. There ain't no record dealer or nothing no more. I'm back to DIY. But I'm not going to fucking hang up my boots and give it up. You know what I mean? I'm going to just go harder and just try it. And okay, I did A, B, and C wrong the first time. I'm going to do it again, and I'm going to do A, B, and C right, and then I'm going to do D, and you know what I mean, keep going and do all this shit right this time. And uh, that's all you can do is just move forward and do it right. Music. Or since you learned not to do A, B, and C, it passed it down. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, what stops you from passing that 
information down or becoming the entity to help the younger people move past it? Uh, in the scene, man, to me, it just, it, the the young cats don't reach out. You know what I mean? They they kind of act like, I don't know if they feel like intimidated, like they can't, because they can. But I, that to me, it just seems like, like oh, these are old heads. Fuck them. What they like, what we did didn't matter. You know what I mean? They kind of look past what people in in my age and, and older did, and uh, or continue to do. And I really, they're kind of shooting herself in the foot. Cause I've 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 went to I go out and you know I go check out hip hop shows, and just watch people and shit. And I usually just sit at the back of the bar. Nobody knows who the fuck I am. I just watch or whatever. And I see cats I like, and they don't even know who I am, or I talk to them, they're just like, ah, and just kind of blow me off. And I'm like, you never heard of me, motherfucker? I've been, I do what you do, and been doing it for 20 fucking years at this level. I'm somebody you should probably shake hands with. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I've had more cold shoulders, you know, and it's like, I don't know, man. I think that's also just the young mentality. Because I was yeah. probably like that when I was young, too. You know what I mean? Like, oh, fuck them old heads. I'm well, doing, I'm doing my that. thing. <laughs> There's something else going on now. Like, mm -hmm. we had a group in here. And, well, a lot of them, they don't believe in OGs. Yeah. You know, and so I, I be always saying. Well, I'm here to tell you OGs are real. <laughs> you better believe. <laughs> but I'm, when, when you say OGs, look, I, I said I'm going to try to find another word for it. Because when mm. you say OGs, people think of street stuff automatically. Right. You know, but I'm talking right. about OGs. These are originals. Music. Originals at this. Yeah, like, they've been music. doing this. Look, yeah. like, look, they be like, don't. When, when you go to this record label, don't go to Puffy because he raping people. Right. Just, just that information. <laughs> right. You know, or it's just giving you the heads up. Right. You know? Yeah. No, absolutely. And, I, and I've got tons of information, you know what I'm saying? And I, like I said, I feel like people just kind of look past me or they think... Uh, I think that brings us back to that conversation from earlier that it's just where you live. People don't really take what you do seriously. You know what I mean? They're like, oh, fuck. That. You know, you live down a block forever. So. Okay, you toured with Trey and Drew. But I did, though. <laughs> you know I, mean? but I think that's just, just par for the course. That's how it goes. That, that, that kind of pissed you off with something. Yeah, and that that's a that's my that's what pisses me off about Toledo. That when you ask me if I'm bitter, I am. I'm, and that's why, just because like it's like how, like I said, how much, how, much, how fucking much do I have to accomplish before somebody says, okay, yeah, you accomplished something. You know what I mean? That's all I just want is like the simple. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> well, so I, this this right here is is that. You know? It is, it is, and I appreciate you, man. This is cool. I love this. Like I said, I go I go do this shit, and people will be like here and they go live on their phone or whatever and i'm immediately i'm like uh and then they'd be like so uh what'd you think of that new wayne album and i'm like what the fuck does this have to do with me <laughs> <laughs> no disrespect to anyone that's interviewed me but that's how a lot of that shit be a lot of the time man so this is a, a, a refreshing thing to actually be able you know you asking me questions that i actually care to talk about hip-hop <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's good <laughs> how did y'all get on a tour with trade the truth that was because we were we were signed at that point mbk had signed with rbc and rbc is a parent company that, that they do like um you know tech nine crazy bone e40 like all my favorite rappers are under the rbc umbrella and uh they signed us and i, I was like fuck yeah, this is dope as fuck you know what i mean i thought it was a dream come true but it turns out when you're at our level they're not throwing no money into your campaign or nothing, you know. No, no, no fucking shade to RBC at all. They're the shit for everything they did for us. But uh, we we decided we wanted to buy out of the contract. Okay, we was like, look, we we're our, we can just put the CD out by ourselves, and and they won't make you know they're just taking money from us. We and we are, we're gonna have the same fans with or without the label. So let's just buy out of our contract. We hit them up, said, can we buy out? They said, yeah. They gave us a price. We bought out of the contract, re-released the CD on our own. What we didn't realize was that when we were assigned to RBC, they were putting us out on tour. You know what I mean? So we were out with Trey the Truth for 30 days all over the U.S. We were out with uh, Insane Clown Posse. We were out with fucking Twisted. Um, I mean, they were, put, they were putting us out. You know, we were on the road. We were, like, traveling. As soon as we weren't signed anymore... We ain't have that cosign no more, okay? So yeah. nobody wanted to put us on tour. We couldn't get even booked at a club out of town. So it kind of killed our whole, you know what I mean? Our, our tree was branching out like this, and we kind of closed ourselves in. 
And I, I, well, that brings me back to where you said earlier, what's a mistake, you know what I mean? The right there is a pivotal mistake that we made. And it was literally just because of our own, own ignorance. We are like, oh, why are these dudes taking money from us? Why are, you know what I mean? Well, it turns out that's why they were taking money from us because they were putting us out, you know what I mean? Giving us opportunity. When you're out on the road, you can make money every night, you know what I mean? You got, you might make $300 off your merchandise in one in one night, you know what I mean? And, that, and that's a good cleanup for a, for a local for a local artist. <laughs> and, uh <laughs> But we, uh, you know, like we bought out thinking that was gonna, like gonna be the move, and it was probably that was probably the worst thing I ever did because I instantly I went from like brand, you know, blossoming Growing. to all of a sudden just like boom, right back in the city. This is where I, am. you know, what I mean. So we did we did that to ourselves, and it was no. And RBC was super cool about it. They probably would have signed us again if we had called back and said, "Look, we changed our mind." Because <laughs> I uh, shout out to Brian Shafton. You know what I'm saying? Our RBC is an awesome label. And uh, like, if anything, I would love to end up there again someday, but I'm not ready. You know what I mean? I, and the thing is, is like, people are like, why don't you call this dude? Or you know what I mean? Like, could I call in favors or ask for this and that? Maybe, probably. But I'm not gonna call nobody and ask to get put on this show or to go do this or whatever until I'm ready. You know what I mean? Until my product's there, until I have everything, until my whole package, until I'm ready to go. Yeah. And then that's when they'll be hearing from me. But I'm not gonna call nobody like I'm about to do this or I'm about to do that. Nobody gives a fuck this what you about to do. Man. Right. I'm finna That's why I don't make those posts. You know how rappers be like, this year I'm doing this or I'm about to put up. I don't do I don't make those posts. If I make a post about my CD, it's CD available now. You don't hear about the shit until then, cause I don't. I ain't about to tell nobody what I'm about to do.